Hello ladies and gents, Greg M here with Track and Field. Just want to kind of go over a little uh, analysis of the women that I think can break the 400 meter world record. So that's going to be my little, my little take on, after watching Sydney McLaughlin and um, also I, I look at um, I think who, who I think can also um, compete for it. But other women out there too, you know, but I think who is just outstanding in the 800 and I think she has the speed and endurance for that. Maybe just need to work on a little bit more high intensity speed to get a better kick. But anyway, I'll move on to the next. Now I'm looking at the 400 meter world record. I have it stamped on both photographs here. Uh, I think Moo, I'm showing 476. And then for Sydney McLaughlin over the hurdles. I mean, not over the hurdles running 476, but 476 for her too. I'm saying, you know, the possibility of them equaling that or breaking that. So who can break the 400 meter world record for the women? Is it Athing Moo or Sydney McLaughlin? And these are two I'm just kind of focusing on. I just kind of, especially McLaughlin, I, I definitely looking at her. Now the 400 meter world record, as you can see below, 47.6, Marita Koch, East Germany. She ran that in Australia in 1985. From 1985, 2022, that record has not been broken. The women have come, you know, they've ran 48.8 or something like that, or 48.7, but has not even come down to not even 48 flat or 47.9. I think Moo has run a, a best of 49.5, that's back in 2021 and, and she did that at what she was what 18 19 you know Sydney McGuffin just recently ran 50.68 a massive improvement of her own world record that she ran at the US trials of 51 41 to 50.68 I had actually predicted 50.9 possibly but she shot her even that and then with that speed that speed over over the hurdles that she used to run that that 50.68. Uh, now imagine, look at I kind of did a little analysis here. If the women can work on their speed a little bit more, keep that strength work up. Yeah, you need good strength training in the weight work to work on your your fast twitch muscles and your endurance. You know, work with the weight to condition your muscle to run that over the track. All right, so let me just go to the next slide just to do a break now and have a little track. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is my little break down here. It's not fancy or anything. You know, I got my little runner set up. No, you've got to get that first hundred is the key. You can't jog out the blocks in the, that first curve of the 400. And you definitely got to be able to whatever momentum speed you built up, which is going to be our own anywhere from 11, 9, 12 flat type of speed to the first 100. Maintain that momentum, relax on that back stretch. And then once you, you know, you hit that 200 mark, you want to have a, 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 a speed of around 23.5 for the world record pace in my, in my mind from calculating it on my calculator, right? And you, you maintain that pace right around the curve to at least a 36 flat at the 300 and then at the 300 now it's it's getting tough now because you're, you're at your max with your speed and your speed endurance so it's a matter now of maintaining momentum by keeping your form keeping your form and arm drive to get the legs going and the person that can keep that momentum the longest meaning you know you're, you're not losing form you're not overreaching overworking you know, head focused down the track, get your knees up, and turn over as best as you can. The person who can do that the best and maintain momentum and and not slow down that quick will be the winner for the um, the 400 and possible world record order. Meaning, if they can say without even saying the first 111 something, and you know, the 300 at 36, and then maintain the last 100 I'd say 11.9 or so just say if they can run an even split they the coach get them in such top condition and form that you can run 23.5 
and then come back in the last 400 in 24 flat that's a, a, a 47 6 equal or if they can work you know get the, the, the work in to do 23 5 23 9 that's a world record if you get conditioned you know do a lot of speed endurance lot of uh you know couple of you know 500 meter over distance workout you definitely need the conditioning work in the fall the strength work the endurance work and then as you start getting to the season the early part early spring you're working on your speed endurance breaking up the race learning how, how to get a good pace because to, to be on that last hundred to set the world record has to be at least you know 11 Five. You got to maintain at least 11.5 pace. So that means I think Mo and Sidney McLaughlin would have to get their 100 meter times down to at least 11.5 or run anywhere from 11.8s, 11.7s type of speed. I see Sidney McLaughlin being able to accomplish that maybe more than I think Mo. Because just watching her in the 800, you know, she keeps like a steady pace. And lately, I hadn't seen her really kick. At the last where she, when she kicked, she didn't get that that burst of, of of speed that I was expecting. You know, she had to kind of lengthen her stride and work hard in uh, in, in in driving her arms. But Sydney McLaughlin, to me, looked like she had that hard speed. And at this point now, just looking at the, the the two, Sydney McLaughlin, I think, has what it takes strength. And speed wise, not to mention the speed endurance, because she ran 50.6 over hurdles. She already ran a 47 split, I forgot what it was, 47 something. And a 4x4 in Eugene, Oregon. 47 8 or something like that. And if she work at it, and any woman really that can achieve where really they can get the the you know the, the speed and momentum to run in and split 200. 23 8 uh, uh, 23 5 23 8 that first 200 are typically the last 200 is probably gonna be a little slower unless you're in exceptional form but if you can break the race down like that and 23 5 and then come to the 24 flat and your body get conditioned to running at that pace Wow I see a world record but the, the individual has to probably just focus on just that event. You can't run the 200 and the 400 or 800 and, and the 400. Your, your body won't be able to handle that at a championship event. But maybe like one of the Grand Prix events. But the work got to be put in. You know, you got to do a little bit of over this thing. You got to get that power work in. You got to get that high intensity speed work in so you can handle that, that speed. You know, or learn how to keep your momentum at a certain pace and run an even split. It's achievable, even if you're not that fast. But if you can get fast enough, I mean, you have to have some speed still. But again, running a balanced race in the four in the 400. You're talking world record 24 and 24 is 48 flat. So yeah, at some point in that first 200, you want to capitalize getting out and getting that 23 five split. And then keep that momentum going around to that 300 and maintain and maybe even have a, a little kick you know that last 50 where you, you have that strength that's war record all day long so that's my take on that what y'all think you think that's achievable so anyway that's what i'm looking at i think sydney mcgoffin at this time now i used to think i think move from our previous 800 or she looked exceptional and just a little bit more speed work but any woman that can get that done, which we are looking at now, Sydney McLaughlin seem to be the one for that now, unless other women step up to break that world record. It's been around since 1985, 47.6. It's achievable. But you, you know, the women have got to want, the women has to, they have to want to put in that work. But anyway, that's my take on that. I intended, I didn't want to make the video that long, but it ended up being long anyway. But um, let me all know what y'all think. We all think you can get the 400 meter world record and if I'm way off target or not. Alright, so that's it for now.